हेलो एवरी वन आई एम डॉक्टर सपना महाले थर्ड ईयर जूनियर रेसिडेंट फ्रॉम जे एम सी मुंबई माई टॉपिक फॉर प्रेजेंटेशन इज रोल ऑफ इमेजिंग इन पैरोड ग्लैंड लीजेंस पैरोड ट्यूमर्स रिप्रेजेंटिंग एटी परसेंट ऑफ द सलाइवरी ग्लैंड ट्यूमर्स मोस्ट ऑफ दिस आर बिग बिनाइन विद प्लूमोफिक एडिनोमा बिंग द मोस्ट कॉमन एंड म्यूकोपिड्रोम कार्सिनोमा इज द मोस्ट कॉमन मेलिग्नेट लीजन इमेजिंग हेल्प्स इन डिलिनेटिंग द एक्सटेंट ऑफ द लीजन एंड इन्वेजन ऑफ द एडजस्टेंट स्ट्रक्चर्स प्री ऑपरेटिव इवेल्यूशन ऑफ द पैरोड ग्लैंड ट्यूमर्स यूजिंग डेडिकेटेड इमेजिंग इज क्रूशल फॉर सर्जिकल प्लानिंग The aim of this study is to localize the, and characterize the parotid lesions, to differentiate benign from the malignant lesions, to study the deeper extent of the disease, to help in the early diagnosis of the lesion that are potential for malignant transformation. Role of imaging in staging of the salivary gland tumors to determine the surgical resectability. MR imaging had been done in on a patient's referred to radiology department for parotid lesions. Three Tesla MRI unit with dedicated neck coil was used for MRI. MR neck imaging protocol included axial T1 T2 weighted images with coronal T2 star DWI sequences and post contrast axial coronal sequences. Gadolinium based contrast media was used. MR angiography performed with top sequences whenever needed. Axial images of the t- axial images uh, of the MRI sequence showed a well defined T1 homogeneous iso intense lesion with a T2 hyper intense lesion in the represented in the superficial lobe of the left parotid gland. Thin rim of T2 hypo intensity representing capsule is seen. Post contrast homo- post contrast T1 fat set images at the same level show near homogeneous enhancement. Based on the imaging findings diagnosis given was the pleomorphic adenoma which came out to be positive for same. Axial images of the MRI showed a few enlarged T1 hypo intense lesion over lesions in the superficial lobe of the right parotid gland. Appearing hypo intense on T2 weighted images with few tiny hyperintense cystic areas within the lesion show homogeneous post contrast enhancement with a few non enhancing areas true diffusion restriction were noted in a lesion the diagnosis given was the wathen tumor based on the multiplicity and imaging findings which came out to be positive for the same axial images of the mri showed t1 hyperintense well defined soft tissue lesion in the superficial and deep lobe of the left parotid gland hyperintense on a t2 weighted images and show homogeneous post contrast enhancement with the patchy areas of diffusion restriction this was a known case of kimura disease and parotid gland involved by the same disease process known case of rvd since birth showed bilateral enlargement of the parotid gland with multiple solid cystic lesions and showing homogeneous rim enhancement on a post contrast scan the diagnosis given was the benign lymphoepithelial lesions this is a known case of type 1 neurofibromatosis in which the t2 hyperintense large lesion o- is seen over the left side of the face and neck involving the left parotid gland multiple small lesions showing central area of low intensity surrounded by t2 hyperintense rim that is target sign is seen and the lesion appearing iso intense on t1 weighted images and show heterogeneous peripheral post contrast enhancement the diagnosis given was a plexiform neurofibroma a well defined t2 star hyperintense lobulator soft tissue lesion is seen involving the right parotid gland multiple fibrolis are seen in the gre sequences lesion appear hypo so intense on a t1 weighted images and early training vein is seen running into the external jugular vein the diagnosis given was the slow flow venous malformation depending on the early training vein axial and core and angiography mr sequences showed a well defined multilocated cystic lesion in the subcutaneous plane of the left buccal mucosa involving the left parotid gland minimal peripheral post contrast enhancement is seen on dynamic angiography no evidence of any er- early enhancement or early training when is seen diagnosis given was the slow flow lymphatic malformation coronal and axial sequences of the mri showed t2 weighted iso2 hyperintense few overd well defined lesions within the superficial lobe of the right parotid gland lesions show hyperintense signal on t2 star images and homogeneous post contrast enhancement with a true diffusion restriction based on the multiplicity and imaging findings the g- Im- uh, diagnosis given was the warthin's tumor however it came out to be in centric castleman disease on a hp a well defined t1 hypo intense lesion in the deep lobe of the parotid gland t2 hyper intense lesion with peripheral post contrast enhancement and central areas of necrosis and show peripheral areas of diffusion restriction the diagnosis given was the carcinoma is pleomorphic adenoma which confirm on pathology a solid cystic lesion with a hypo intense solid component on a t1 weighted images hypo intense solid component on a t2 weighted images the solid component of the lesion show heterogeneous post contrast enhancement with patchy areas of diffusion restriction on a dwi the diagnosis given was mucopidermoid carcinoma which came out to be positive on a histopathological examination a solid cystic lesion in the superficial lobe of the right parotid gland with a solid component appearing hypo intense on t1 t2 weighted images Uh, the minimal post contrast enhancement is seen and showed 
defeated through deficient restriction the diagnosis given was the warthin's tumor however on histopathological examination it came out to be secretory carcinoma a well defined t1 iso intense solid cystic lesion with irregular margins is seen in the superficial lobe of the left parotid gland solid cap component appearing hypo intense on t2 weighted images and showed heterogeneous post contrast enhancement without true deficient restriction the diagnosis given was the acinic cell carcinoma which came out to be positive on a histopathological examination the study included 38 cases out of which uh, pleomorphic adenoma is the most common benign lesion and mucoepidermal carcinoma along with the carcinoma ex pleomorphic adenoma is the most common malignant lesion uh, depending on the findings in the in this case in this uh, study the most of the benign lesion showed well defined uh, margins with a high signal intensity on a t2 weighted t2 uh, weighted images and homogeneous enhancement with area absent areas of necrosis and malignant lesions showed well defined margin ill defined margins with intermediate to low signal intensity on a t2 weighted images and heterogeneous enhancement with presence of necrosis pleomorphic adenoma is the most common benign parotid tumor lesions smaller than 2 cm showed high signal intensity on a t2 weighted images with homogeneous post contrast enhancement larger lesions may appear heterogeneous due to necrotic and mixoid components warthin's tumor also known as a cyst adenolymphoma smoking is the main risk factor multiplicity and bilaterality is the feature heterogeneous with variable signal intensity on a t2 weighted images and heterogeneous post contrast enhancement <laughs> kimura disease is a very rare chronic inflammatory disease intraparotid lesions show homogeneous enhancement with restricted diffusion due to their hypercellular nature and lower content of fibrosis benign lymphoepithelial lesion is the mixed solid cystic lesion with enlargement of the parotid gland associated with a cervical lymph node enlargement plexiform neurofibroma is the hallmark of nf1 may show characteristic target sign unicentric castelman disease also known as angiofollicular lymph node hyperplasia can be unicentric or multicentric head neck involvement is rare and extremely rare chances of salivary gland involvement diagnostic challenge because it mimics the other neoplasm tissue sampling is necessary carcinoma ex pleomorphic adenoma thought to arise from the pre existing pleomorphic adenomas these are generally heterogeneous on t1 weighted images mucoepidermal carcinoma is most common malignant parotid tumor and if i imagine which are depend on the histological type acinic cell carcinoma is the most common malignant epithelial neoplasm almost exclusively occur in salivary gland and imaging features are non specific secretory carcinoma previously defined as a zymogen poor variant of acinic cell carcinoma solid components are very rare similar to the adenoid cystic carcinoma conclusion on mr most benign and malignant parotid lesions can be discriminated by their appearance pre operative imaging is vital for surgical management these are my references